Long before bluegrass or bourbon were known around the world, before horses were off to the races, even back before Kentucky ever became Kentucky, wide open fields of what they called the bear grass grew as far as the eye could see. But it wasn't just bears that roamed that fresh wilderness. Folks settled in, sturdy souls with stout hearts and strong spirits. While Daniel Boone was busy carving his initials in a bear grass tree, his baby brother Squire was preaching to a bunch of pioneers down at the bear grass creek. In fact, it didn't take long before those very people would establish the first church in this neck of the woods. Folks around the world would learn to call that wider frontier land Kentucky, but we just call it home. Soon, pioneers discovered it was true, that here the grass was a little bluer, and a rugged river town took shape where the Ohio River met the Beargrass Creek. Today, people worldwide come together to celebrate a place where we welcome refugees and royalty alike. Some people call it Louisville, and still others even call it Louisville. But no matter what they may call it, we just call it home. In time, that simple pioneer faith, born on the Kentucky frontier, grew up as the Christian Church Disciples of Christ, all about bringing different folks together, founded not on creeds or tests of faith, but a simple call to live out our lives more like the one who showed us what love is all about. Times have changed since then, and God knows we've certainly changed as well. It may not just be a church in the bear grass anymore, but every weekend down on Shelbyville Road in the heart of St. Matthews, the community comes together from all around. 45 zip codes, 11 counties, two states, and beyond for a farmer's market on Saturday, right back on Sunday for worship, and serving the community seven days a week. We're not perfect people, and we're not the perfect church, but we're all people on a journey towards the way of Jesus. Here, all are welcome. With open hearts and open minds, we unite as folks of every kind, color, orientation, generation, and occupation. Some spiritual and some seekers, some conservative, some progressive, and some in between. But we're proud to claim each other as family because we believe that no matter what divides us in this fragmented world, all of us are invited to share the bread and cup at the table together. Some people call it Beargrass Christian Church, but we just call it home. Our favorite thing about Beargrass is that it is a welcoming community. Eight years ago when we moved to Louisville and were looking for church, we found Beargrass that helped us raise our kids in Christ and nurture our faith in Christ. Beargrass also has a discipleship class, which helped me get ready for baptism. And that's why we call Beargrass home. Welcome to Beargrass Christian Church, a place called home. We gather together every Sunday here on Shelbyville Road in the heart of St. Matthews. And we invite you to join us during this next half hour to get to know us a little better as we celebrate the love of Jesus Christ. Let the winds of your spirit blow over us, hear the sound. Feel your power, let us open our hearts to your healing grace, let it flow through our lives this hour. You call us by name, you call us by name, you breathe in us the breath of life, you call us by name. The sound of your voice, I have redeemed you, you are mine. Let us feel the touch of your warm embrace as your spirit fills our lives. You call us by name, you call us by name, you breathe in us the breath of life. Breathe in us the breath. 
Good morning and welcome to our WHAS family all across the Louisville area. We are so grateful that you're with us right here from the heart of St. Matthew's at Beargrass Christian Church. Thanksgiving is, of course, just around the corner. As a kid, I used to love this time of year. A time you get to sit around making a list of Christmas presents that somebody else is supposed to get you. It was maybe in middle school or so that I saw something a friend of mine had and instantly knew I wanted it. I'm sure there were other things on my Christmas list that year, but looking back, I can't remember any of them except for this one thing, Billy the Big Mouth Bass. Now, some of you might be in the unfortunate circumstances of remembering that brief 45-second period in American history when these things were popular. But if you don't, you didn't miss that much. Uh, Billy the Big Mouth Bass is just the singing mechanical fish that would dance around whenever you walked by it and do the most horrendous cover of that song. Don't worry. Be happy. Now... I'm not sure why I wanted that piece of junk in the first place. But even at the time, after about two minutes with this fish in my bedroom, I realized that putting this thing on my Christmas list had been a huge mistake. Even in middle school, in the stress of quizzes and tests, Billy's advice not to worry and just be happy instead didn't really hold up all that well. So if no one out there has ever told you this piece of advice, don't forget you heard it here first. Never take advice from a singing fish. <laughs> Telling someone who is worried just to be happy is like trying to tell a cow just to walk a little faster. It isn't built that way. So hopefully it's not all that surprising as we see in the scripture today that Jesus has entirely different advice than Billy, the big mouth bass. Now, even so, at the same time, Jesus, no doubt, is entirely caught up in making sure that, that we, who want to follow him, don't get stuck worrying all the time. In the Sermon on the Mount, across just a few short verses, Jesus says it over and over again. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. Why do you worry? Therefore, do not worry. Can any of you, by worrying, add a single day to your life? It's so important to Jesus that we not become stuck by our worries, that he has to tell us not once, but four times in just a few verses, not to worry. So hearing this from Jesus over and over again almost makes it sound like he could have been the original inspiration for Billy the Big Mouth Bass in that song. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, be happy. But the truth is, but Jesus doesn't want us to worry his remedy to the situation. It's not just to be happy instead. The trouble with thinking that don't worry, be happy is going to be a solution to our problems is that truly a happiness has got to be one of the most fleeting of all our human emotions. And think about it, we can be happy when we see this heartwarming commercial on TV one minute and then instantly be filled with anger when we see a political ad 30 seconds later that we don't agree with. Trying to substitute worry for happiness is like trying to, to fill an ocean with a measuring cup on a windy day. It just won't work. It just won't last. So while Jesus, yes, tells us over and over again not to worry, did you catch it? Did you notice his solution instead? Don't worry, but strive first for the kingdom of God. And God's righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. 
In other words, the solution to stop worrying about all the little things that weigh us down in life, it is not just to ignore them and try to be happy instead. Rather, it's to focus instead on the things that really do matter the most in this life. It's not that being happy is somehow wrong. Of course not. We're not Puritans here. Joy is one of the most essential fruit of the Spirit. It's just the reality. Being worried about being happy all the time, it just doesn't work. And so what does it do? It wastes the precious, sacred time that we've been given. Jesus doesn't want us to get caught up in worrying all the time. And why is that? Because if we do that, not only does it keep us from being happy people, but far more importantly, it also keeps us from becoming the people who God needs us to be. I'll give you an example. There was a scientific study done several years back about what makes us happy as human beings. And what these scientists did was randomly assign people to two different groups. The first group was supposed to make a list every day of the things they were grateful for, while the second group was supposed to make a list every day of the things that worried them. You can just guess what some of those things were. In that gratitude group, they said the, the generosity of friends, the right to vote, sunset through the clouds, falling leaves this time of year, the chance to be alive, to make our own decisions, friends you can count on living close by. And you can also probably guess some of the things they said in that, that worry group when they made their list. It's hard to find parking. The house is always dirty. Paying taxes. No money for gas. Doing a favor for a friend who would never pay it back. Family who drive you crazy living a little too close by. Now, every day when people made these lists, people in both groups were asked to write a journal entry of the kind of mood they were in on that day, how they thought their lives were going. And from analyzing all those journals people kept up with every day, the scientists found, listen to this, that on average, the list of things that were grateful for, those people were 25% happier than the people who had been focused on the worries of their life. Now, that's fascinating to me. Now, maybe it's not a bad idea, this season of Thanksgiving, from now until Thanksgiving, to wake up every single day and make that list of the things you're grateful for. Maybe it's not a bad idea, but at, at the same time, out of fear of not sounding too much like Billy the Big Mouth Bass, that's not what I want you to take away from this study. Because there is more to this life than our own happiness. So here's why I bring it up. The people who focused on what they were grateful for increased their exercise routines by 90 minutes every single week. Now why is that? Their gratitude literally set them in motion it got them up a reason to get going in the day. And not only that, the, the people all around them reported them to be more attentive and supportive, to be helpful to the people that they cared about and the people they didn't. Their, their list of things to be grateful for was not as important as the way that that gratitude changed their lives, that it shaped their lives, that it set them into motion to do something in this world. That's why when Jesus says, look at the birds of the air, uh, they neither sow nor reap nor gather in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not, Jesus asks, of more value than they? When we're worried all the time, making ourselves sick, trying to stuff our own barns full to the brim until they're overflowing, that means we cannot empty them out to make this earth a little closer than it already is in heaven, to make this world a place where no child ever goes to bed hungry. 
So Jesus says, can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to the span of your life? Another way to say that, Jesus is saying in some way that it is God's job to give us another day to live. But it is our job to make sure above all else that we are living our life to the fullest, making the most of that day. It's a hard lesson to learn. I learned it seven years ago, this exact month, when my mother passed from this world into the next. I can still remember sitting there around her bedside as my sisters and my father and I grieved and cried, saying goodbye to her, wanting to keep her for one more day. But it was the words of a doctor who gave us a harsh and bitter truth that ended up being one of the greatest gifts I could have ever imagined. We asked, is there anything left that we can do to make her any better? And the doctor looked at us and said, I'm sorry to tell you, there is nothing that you can do except to be with her now. Since that time, it has not gotten even one ounce easier to think about how much I miss her, how much I wish she were still here to call me on the phone so I could pick it up and hear her say, I love you. But in those final moments with her, I will always be grateful for that doctor who told us bluntly the hard truth that our job in that moment was to be present with her. The gift of hearing that just helped me let go of my mind racing and worrying about what we could do, what we could control, what we could fix, and instead be free to be present with her and not miss a moment. And while the amount that I miss her hasn't shrunk a bit since then, what has changed is the slow daily growth of that reminder of how precious every moment on this earth is, how wonderful and beautiful our lives are. And so I know it to be true. None of us, by worrying, can add a single hour to the span of our lives. But I know this to be true. Let none of us waste even one foolish moment worrying, fixating about those things we can't do anything about. Don't worry. But don't take your advice from Billy the Big Mouth Bass. In this season of Thanksgiving, no. It's not Billy we put our faith in. But these words you can hold as trustworthy and true don't worry. Be grateful. Amen.
I bet we can all think of times or tables where we have been excluded from. Maybe it's a family holiday gathering where we're forced to sit at the kids' table. Maybe it's a wedding where we're forced to sit at the singles' table. Or maybe it's another table where you've been told to go to a certain place because of your age, your gender, your race, or another distinction. But here at this table, at God's table, all are welcome just as they are. God says, come just as you are because you are unique and wonderfully made and always welcomed here. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for the chance to gather at your table on this day. We give you thanks that you welcome us just as we are because we are all your beloved children. As we share in this meal, may it strengthen us to go out into the world and share your love and good news. In your most holy name we pray, amen. On the night before he died, Jesus took the bread, blessed it, broke it, shared it with his disciples and said, this is my body broken for you. And after the meal, he took the cup, poured it out and blessed it and said, as often as you drink from this cup, remember me. The bread of life, the cup of hope and salvation, God's gift given to all of God's children. Let us come now, share in this meal and know that all are welcome at this table. As disciples, the central part of our worship experience is the celebration of communion. And though you may not be able to worship in person with us today, we want you to know that you are now a treasured part of our worshiping community. We invite you to gather communion elements convenient to you and participate with us this morning. We celebrate that this table is a table that unites us and connects us across miles, across ideas, across any number of barriers. And ultimately, we hope that you know that you are loved and accepted here. We've seen it too many times before. A lot of churches come on TV just to ask for money. But the good people at Beargrass Christian Church have already made today's program possible. So instead, we're asking something different. If you've been moved by something you've heard or seen on today's program, join us in what we're calling a reverse offering, featuring an incredible mission partner across Louisville that's doing great work right here in our community. Today, we're sending a gift and we invite you to join us in supporting this wonderful organization that we invite you to learn more about this morning. Let's take a listen. In 2020, Penny was thrown from a car in a garbage bag. Three of her legs were broken as well as her tail. One of her legs was so badly injured, it required amputation. Luckily, the other two were repaired with surgery. The Arrow Fund rescues animal victims of extreme torture, abuse, and neglect. Working with government shelters, rescue groups, and private citizens, they provide veterinary care and support, increase public awareness of all forms of animal cruelty, encourage vigorous criminal prosecution of animal abusers, and endorse and support other animal protection efforts that encourage a more humane world for animals. Through this month's reverse offering, Beargrass is proud to send a donation to the Arrow Fund this morning, and we'd like to invite you to join us in supporting this life-saving project by adding your own donation. Go to thearrowfund.kindful.com. Oh, and Penny, she was adopted, is thriving, and living her best life. Thanks for joining us this morning. Your presence has been such a blessing. We'd love to see you next Sunday. We gather every week for worship in the heart of St. Matthew's at Beargrass Christian Church right on Shelbyville Road. Each week we meet for worship at 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock. And you can learn more about our worship services at www.beargrass.org. We will also find links to our Facebook or YouTube weekly live stream broadcast as well. One of the best things about this community is that together we worship with hope, we grow with love, and we serve with a passion for justice. So this morning, we want to conclude our time together by focusing on one of the ways that Beargrass lives out our mission all across Louisville in this city that we are so proud to call home. The earth is our home, the one thing we all have in common and share together with everyone around the world. At Beargrass, we believe we're called to care for God's creation 
because as the old proverb goes, we don't inherit the earth from our ancestors, we borrow it from our children. Here at Beargrass Christian Church, our commitment as a Green Chalice congregation challenges us to broaden our efforts to honor God's creation and our impact to ensure its beauty endures for generations to come. Around the campus, our Green Chalice team has planted a pollinator garden on church property and upgraded our facilities with eco-friendly technologies. Our efforts to reduce the amount of waste the congregation produces has helped us reduce our carbon footprint in all kinds of ways, big and small. Around Louisville, we've planted trees for new Habitat for Humanity homes and through the Trees Louisville program. And we're grateful to host events, worship services, and workshops that lead us to all think about the ways we can make this planet a better place to call home. For all this and more, we're proud to honor our commitment as a Green Chalice congregation to do our part to care for this one earth that binds us all together.